I come now uh, 20 years uh, Thailand. We come, uh, we give some agent money, go to New Zealand before our family. And after that, uh, six months uh, uh, he missing. No have anyone to help before, and he missing, and we very difficult to stay in Bangkok and food everything. But uh, some. NGO, they help my children and form my family. And after I work restaurant, and I after I open this my restaurant and everything okay. Now I have uh, two people cook, chef. Now my children, know everybody study everything already, and now. Good business, my business, very good. I like to give food very good, very tasty. And Sri, Sri Lanka and uh, President and everybody also come to my restaurant. My name is Manil. I am from Sri Lanka, Nigambu. Uh, I want to tell how to cook uh, dal curry for Sri Lanka. There was a time, probably in the Indus Valley, probably about 5,000 years ago, when someone became the first person ever to grind spices into a paste or a powder and use it as the base of a thick stew. And ever since then, the world can't get enough curry. It's a core part of the local cuisine here in Thailand, but also in Pakistan, England, Japan, Jamaica, Cameroon, and almost everywhere in between. Here on OTR, we're obsessed with food history, and also with curry. So we're diving into one to start understanding the other. Going country by country to learn from master chefs what goes in their favorite local curry and how you can make it at home. This is OTR's Curry Crawl. Mom cook, I study for my mother. She cook rice and curry, and Eastern hopper, and hoppers, and many, many Sri Lankan food, and dal curry, and coconut sambal, and fish curry, chicken curry, everything, vegetable curry, I uh, study for my mother. food very tasty. Go eat Sri Lankan food. Everybody want to go again Sri Lanka. <laughs> Sri Lanka is an entire world of food culture packed into one tiny island off the southern coast of India. It's blessed with an abundance of natural ingredients and spices, and it's the birthplace of cinnamon among lots of other ingredients. I was lucky enough to spend 10 days in Sri Lanka right before COVID, and it was an absolutely transcendent experience in every way, especially the food. Sri Lankan cuisine combines two cultures, Tamil food from South India and the local Sinhalese, which is what we're cooking today. And at the heart of all of it, rice and curry, the backbone of all Sri Lankan cuisine. Within that category, there's almost an unlimited array of tastes and flavors and ingredients, but it almost always comes with dal. The oldest evidence of dal in a culinary context comes from Haryana in the Indus Valley, which is also the site of the very first curry. So it's possible, maybe even probable, that this stew of lentils or split peas or mung beans with onion, tomato, and spices is one of the oldest curries on the planet. The dish has been recorded for millennia, quickly spreading across the subcontinent from Nepal to the southern tip of India. 
It's there on the Malabar coast in the state of Kerala that we first find the addition of coconut milk as well as other spices and seasonings that form the basis of what today is the classic Sri Lankan version of the dish. Sri Lankan dal has a flavor distinct from any other version of this curry, packed with spices and still subtle and balanced. The version served here at Manal Lanka is exactly right, so good that ever since this place opened, every time the Sri Lankan president would come to Bangkok, he'd insist on starting his trip here with a meal of dal curry and rice. This is how it's made. I'll quickly preface this by saying that the point of this series is not strictly a point-by-point -point recipe. It's to watch master chefs from around the world show what curry means to them, to see how they work with ingredients and eavesdrop into their kitchens, to see the similarities and differences of what different cultures call curry. Chef Manel cooks in the same way as she learned from her family. We aren't using measuring cups, and the exact proportions aren't going to be explained here, but we'll do our best to be a fly on the wall as she makes the version of Sri Lankan doll that helped her overcome horrific poverty to become one of the most respected chefs in perhaps the world's best food city. Here's her recipe. Dal, the ingredient, not the dish, means lentils. In this case, masur dal or red lentils. First, she rinses the lentils under running water, then adds water in a small pot and starts to boil the water. Here, again, she's cooking by feel, and she knows what she's doing after 40 years of making this dish, but it's roughly a ratio of about one cup of lentils to two and a half cups of water. And these red lentils do not need to be rehydrated. They can cook straight from dry. She told us that the water should be boiled at a medium temperature, but remember this is an Asian kitchen, medium is still roughly the strength of a jet engine, so cooking at home at this point turned the heat up high. Anyway, then she slices raw tomato, red onion, and green chili pepper, and adds them into the pot of lentils and water. Then it's time to start adding some more flavor. First is turmeric powder, a key in all Sri Lankan curries. Then salt, chili powder, and curry powder, which she grinds herself in the restaurant. By now, the water should be at a rolling boil. And it took about 15 minutes from when she first put the lentils on to boil until it reduced to the right consistency. While we're waiting, we'll make our spice paste. We start with red onion, two cloves of garlic, and a bit of coconut oil. Then add sliced pandan leaves and put it over heat to soften the onions. Then add a bunch of dried chili flakes and let it continue to fry together until it becomes a paste. Then set that aside while we go back to our doll. After much of the water has absorbed or evaporated and the lentils look like this, she adds thick coconut, coconut milk. Now, obviously the ingredients here are eyeballed. Chef Manel has been cooking this dish her entire life, so it might take some trial and error, but you're going for a thin consistency, so be liberal. Anyway, after adding the coconut milk, she stirs the curry for about three minutes to work it in and absorb all the flavor. Then about a tablespoon of unsweetened lime juice. 
and a big spoonful of the spice paste we made a few minutes ago. And that's it. She left it over the heat on the lowest temperature setting for a few more minutes to keep it warm before service, but for all intents and purposes, your doll is now done. This is the flavor of Sri Lanka. It's bright and vibrant and balanced and packed full of flavor. Making use of fresh ingredients like tomato and onion, as well as spices endemic to the island of Sri Lanka, but now famous and readily available all over the world. As we begin our series of exploring the techniques and ingredients that define curry to chefs across the world, there's nothing more pure and timeless than a bowl of dal. And while the original dal comes from India and the dish is famous in cuisines throughout South Asia, there's nothing more satisfying than this version from Sri Lanka. Subscribe for more from OTR and make sure you click the links below if you want to follow us on Facebook or Instagram.